my presence YouTube channel. What's going on? What's happening? Look, I didn't really want to do this. I wanted to leave it alone, but I had to go back and tap the well one more time because I'm realizing that there's more levels and layers to the Will Smith and Jada Pinkett marriage, their open marriage. And a couple of things I just want to highlight that I think that people should really take heed to. Because at one point, they were described as the it couple, uh, the couple that people should emulate, uh, the couple that reinforces uh, quote-unquote black love and represents a strong black family and union. When, when you look at the details, you realize that that might not be the case. And if any publisher, any magazine... Any news station, any reporter, anyone uses Will Smith and Jada Pinkett as the prototype of a successful, healthy black marriage or union or just any marriage in general. A healthy marriage or union. Do not listen to them. They're out of your mind. And I'm going to explain exactly why. So Will Smith put out a book recently titled Will. And he's been doing rounds all across social media and different news networks that are pretty much telling his life story. Now, he's been real candid in his book, apparently. A lot of the things that he discusses has to do with, you know, the trials and tribulations that he dealt with growing up uh, and also becoming successful after his rap career in Hollywood. And one of the things that I will uh, point out, which to me was a red flag, is the fact that he said... That at his most healthiest point in his life, physically, right? And we could go back to his roles in Ali, his roles in Aladdin, and majority of his roles where he plays either a superhero or a hero in the movie, right? Uh, the protagonist where he has to be someone who saves the world. So, relatively speaking, Will Smith has been in pretty much good shape. So, I believe him when he says, as the most healthiest in his life, right? But in the second part of that statement, he says, as the most healthiest that he was in life, he was suicidal. Now, we all know that what you digest, what you intake, it has an effect on your body. And if you're ingesting the right foods, if you're taking the right supplements and vitamins then it's going to reflect on your body. But if you are having suicidal thoughts, that's a mental issue, right? That's a, a mental situation. And a lot of times, it has to do with stress. And more often than not, stress factors has to do with external factors, external issues as to what's going on. So it may be the people in your life that's causing you stress. It may be the fact that you have to uphold a certain type of uh, image in public and that's stressful it might be due to any marital issues or any family related issues that could cause stress so you already know where i'm going with this right you know i'm going to the whole aspect of jada pinkett smith and a lot of the stress that she has brought into will's life right we can always go to the fact that will smith was not her first love she makes that known over and over and over again Right, whether it's on Tupac's birthday or the anniversary of Tupac's untimely demise, she is never at a loss of words when it comes to her respect, her love, her affection, and her praise of another man. And the sad thing about that, look, look, I understand that women have a history, they have a past before you go ahead and date them and marry them, but you do understand that I've never heard Jada Pinkett Smith mention Will Smith in a positive light. Never mention Will Smith in terms of admiration. I, I've never seen Jada Pinkett Smith big up Will Smith. Every time they're together, it's either she's teasing him, she's ridiculing him in a jestful manner, or she's uh, down-talking him on the Red Table Talks with her family. Or she has these smirks on her face whenever they're together and he, you know, does the Will Smith thing where he's being silly and he talks a lot. And in the book, and he discussed this with Oprah, in the book, Will admits that they had a little bit of a tiff where Jada Pinkett was upset by how he was reacting amongst the company that they were with. 
and Jada Pinkett told him to shut the fuck up. I shit you not. This is what Will discloses in the book, that Jada told him in public to shut the fuck up. Now, I'm no relationship expert, but one thing I do know is that if you're a woman, a woman who's 5'2", to your 6'2 frame, a woman who is on the lower scale in terms of successful having a successful career, having a lot less money than you, not being the breadwinner, a woman being less famous than you. So again, doesn't have the fame, doesn't have the notoriety, doesn't have the money, doesn't have the success, doesn't have the physical stature to frame for a woman with that type of description that is mentioned to you. A woman with that type, I, I, I'm at a loss of words, but a woman of that type of pedigree, for her to fix her mouth and tell her husband, or I guess at the time they weren't, they weren't married, I don't think so, I, I could be wrong. But to tell her man, her confidant, her provider, protector, her lover, for a woman of that size and stature and that pedigree to tell her man to shut the fuck up in public, it tells me a lot. It tells me, number one, there's a lack of respect for a partner. There's some type of perception that she is physically and maybe personality-wise, more masculine than her partner. The fact that she might wear the pants in the relationship or run the relationship. It also highlights the fact that she might think that Will Smith is below her. She might think that Will Smith is beneath her. She might think Will Smith is a bitch. For her to talk to him like he is a bitch. And apparently he mentioned this happened early on in their relationship. And he made a point to say to her that look. I watched my father punch my mother in her mouth. And I don't want this to be the road that we go down. So as a result of what I've seen in the past. In my younger formidable days. I want to have a healthy relationship with you. So I don't want us to yell. I don't want us to get to a point where we're cursing at each other. I want us to be able to talk to each other in a rational, calm manner and work out our differences. And according to what he says, ever since then, they've been a harmonious couple, which we know is not true. But here's the thing I want to point out. Number one, I hate when people put their father's under the bus and make statements about my father was abusive to my mother because you never ever hear the son right or the daughter come out and say I watch my mother degrade my father in public emasculate my father in public you never hear that now I'm not excusing abuse physical abuse no but what I'm saying is, notice how it is acceptable for people to put down their fathers. And if I could add, there's one point in the book where Will Smith talks about why they uh, got separated in 2011. Apparently, Will Smith decided on Jada Pinkett's 40th birthday to pull out all the stops, to plan this big celebration, bring all of her friends and her relatives, bring performers like Mary J. Blige, have a big birthday theme. This birthday celebration would last the span of the entire weekend. A man of Will Smith's means. Doing everything that he possibly can. To celebrate and commemorate his wife's 40th birthday. And on the second day of that birthday celebration. Jada Pinkett. This is what he says in his book. Jada Pinkett told him. To cancel the festivities. Because she didn't like it. She didn't approve of it. She didn't appreciate it. Cancel the festivities. Now. I don't know about y'all. But. 
when your man, not even the man, when your husband, when your husband takes his time, dedicates his time, spends his money, puts in the effort and the thoughtfulness to prepare such an event that will last for three days, even if it's not your cup of tea, even if you thought that the decor was tacky, and you don't like Mary J. Blige, uh, you don't like her music, which I doubt that was the case, but just say you didn't like her music, you would still humor him. You would still stand there and clap your hands and pretend to do your fake dance and fake smile, and you would tell him you love it. Even if you had some issues with it, you still tell him that. Why? Because you still appreciate the effort and the time and the resources that he put into it. That's called respect. That's called appreciation. That's called a level of maturity. But that's not what Jada did. Instead, she told him to cancel it midway through. So in other words, everybody who was a part of the event, from the organizers, the performers, to the guests, they all would have been aware that there was an issue and that there was some problems in their marriage that caused them to cancel it. That's embarrassing. One thing that you can never recover from is embarrassing your partner publicly. There's a part in the book where Will Smith talks about after his separation with that whole 40th birthday bash fiasco that didn't go well. He says that during his split in 2011, he decided to take a trip to South America and take psychedelics 14 times. He also visited a tantric sex expert as well too. Now, I want to point this out to you. This is a red flag. I'll explain to you why. Because keep in mind, Will Smith is rich. Will Smith has a lot of money, so he has access to a lot of things that poor people don't have access to. Okay? Usually when you break up from a relationship, a lot of people, you know, they end up down in, in the dump. They end up in situations where they're depressed. They feel like they don't want to live anymore. They feel like their life is ruined. They feel like a failure. A lot of times people resort to drugs, alcohol, crack, cocaine, meth, whatever the case may be. We've seen them. There might be people in our families. We know of those people. But when it comes to people who have money and riches and fame... It could get things based on their face alone. They turn to other things. Things that because it's a person of wealth. That is doing it. We consider it to be of high value. Of a high brow type of activity. Something that is accepted or acceptable in society. But really, when you take away the money from it, that whole psychedelics thing, the ayahuasca thing that Will Smith admitted to taking 14 times, it really is no different from your brother, your mother, or your cousin who just got out of a bad marriage or bad relationship and they turned to crack. Now, I hope I didn't lose you because the exact same thing. What is the difference? Both of them are in pain. Both of them are searching for something. Both of them are looking for answers. Looking to place blame at somebody. Looking to rebound and find meaning in their lives. Poor people might turn to crack because that's what they can access to. That's what they have access to. Rich people would turn to ayahuasca and other type of experimental drugs and psychedelics. This is exactly what Will Smith admitted in his book that he's done. Taken psychedelics 14 times. To me, that's someone who is on a drug binge. That's someone who's on type of a, a spiritual journey. Not someone who is well informed or someone who's who has a a, a spiritual uh, rejuvenation. All those fancy words that people want to use to excuse 
ridiculous behavior, Will Smith turned to crack, the proverbial crack. Will Smith turned to that to cope with his failing marriage. People might not want to see it that way, but that's exactly what taking psychedelics is. It's drugs for rich people. You want to argue with me? Go ahead, you can argue with me. But that's exactly what Will Smith turned to. And that should be a red flag and an eye-opener for everybody that Will Smith, whether you believe it or not, what do you think? That Will Smith is some type of honorable guy, a guy that is a, 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 that transcends uh, the image of what a masculine male is supposed to be or a male or father figure or a black man is supposed to be because that's what they're trying to use Will Smith and prop him up to be. The new age black man. The black man who accepts ridicule from his wife accepts disrespect, looks at it from a higher journey, a personal journey where he's trying to rise above the base level thinking of what a masculine male is supposed to be. That's how it's positioned. But don't get fooled by it. Understand that Will Smith is in pain. He is hurt. He is looking for answers and looking for love in all the wrong places. And 14 times taking a particular drug is never a good thing okay so i'm gonna leave you with this last thing because we all are witnessing this we all are consuming this and the one thing that i want people to understand above everything else is that will smith and jada pinkett are entertainers they are in hollywood they do this for a living and one thing that you notice is that every time jada pinkett says one thing negatively about will smith bashes will smith says something that will place will smith in a negative light Will Smith always comes back with a counter. Oh, I traveled to this place. That I'm gaining more spirituality. Oh, I'm putting out a, a new movie that discusses certain issues when it comes to relationships. Oh, I'm dropping the book. There always seems to be some type of yin and yang with them. Jerry Pinkett put something out. Will Smith put something out. And they go back and forth in tandem. They are working together. It wouldn't surprise me that all of this is for the purpose of putting out content that they could feed off each other so they could sell more books, get more views on the Red Table Talks. So in other words, they are working together building a brand, a lifestyle brand, a brand that changes the way people think about marriage and relationships and how they relate to one another as a man and a woman. Right? I mean, we see with their kids as well, too, and the lives that they lead. They are a family unit. They might not be as divided, as disjointed or dismembered as we believe them to be. They might be a well-oiled machine. Playing everybody else. Playing everybody's emotions. Playing everybody's interests. Doing all the things that they need to do to generate interest. Because I know more about Will Smith and his personal lives than I know about my relatives' personal lives. Than my brother's personal lives. Than my father's personal lives. Ask yourself why is that? Because any man with integrity, any man who had balls, they would leave already. You don't need to put up with this type of humiliation. Unless this is all part of the plan to generate funds, income, and to provide, again, an avenue for Jada Pinkett to now be relevant. Because she's as, as relevant as she's ever been when she was an actor. And Will Smith, who it seems like he's not really doing the acting thing too much anymore. He's more on the producing side and getting into different revenue streams. He's supposed to be some type of... A uh, new uh, life guru now putting out books. So he has his own rebrand that he's doing as well too. So sometimes you might want to take a step back and think to yourself. Do we need to feel that bad for Will Smith? Do we need to be concerned about Will Smith? Or do we need to see for what it is? That these guys are the biggest hustlers of 2020, 2021. And they are getting to the bag as people say on social media. So it makes you wonder... Is it possible that they are in cahoots and they know exactly what buttons to press and what things to say and what will grab the headlines and what will get them the notoriety and the attention that they need to sell their products? Think about that. 
Think about that before we react to anything that they say anymore. Think about the fact that whenever Jay Pickett says something, Will Smith comes back with something else. Because we're all itching to hear what, what Will Smith has to say. We're now bought in. What's Will Smith going to do? How's he going to respond? And now they both have our attention when they shouldn't at all. So that's my take on the whole continuous soap opera with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Who knows, I'm going to have to tap the well again and do another response video in regards to Jada Pinkett coming out with her own tell-all book. Who knows if that's going to happen, but until then, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how you think about the situation. And until next time, as I always say, next move, best move. Peace.